Hello, this is Ruby from the Useful Journal. I am going to show you today how I created my Dutch door spreads in February this year. And I don't normally show my monthly process, but I actually got organized for once and filmed most of it. So I'm going to show you my design process and then how I've used washi and uh, knife work to create, oh, and I use stamps as well, to create spreads uh, that blend together to create a series of backyards that all hide little doggies up to mischief. So here we go. Now creating a Dutch door spread like this can get a little bit confusing. So I decided to draw it out using Procreate first. And the advantage of using Procreate was that I could create layers, which meant that I could shift things around. And the other huge advantage was that I could start by drawing a fence and I ended up drawing all the fences and then I was able to go back to that layer afterwards and add in the details that would be hidden by the layer above it like this dog kennel for instance or other details so um, I then was able to shift things around so I started out with only a few layers but then realized that there wasn't enough for all the spreads I needed for the month and I went oh my gosh I've got to add another layer in and so I ended up having to resize my fences and make them a bit shorter so that I could then spread them out a bit further to add in the extra layer. Now you can imagine if you waited until you were journaling to do that it would be a mess so it was great to be able to do it on Procreate first. So that's an iPad app and um, it was really, really useful in working out what I needed to do on each page. So this is the final layer I added in. And the red is just marking what I was going to use each page for. So first I just clicked my page back to stop bounce using a beautiful box I got in the Ukraine. I keep a swatch book in one of my journals and it's got all my colour swatches in it and it's so useful for selecting the colours I want to use in my spreads because I can see them all next to each other. Um, I really recommend having a swatch book. I've also got all my washi tapes swatched in that book as well. So first of all I drew out the design on the first page and here I am cutting out my fence palings for the first fence using, this is a paper backed washi tape from the washi tape shop. I realised it was upside down. <laughs> when you're cutting, I generally do most of my cutting straight onto a cutting board but if you're cutting into your journal, you've got to be so gentle. You do learn how much pressure to put on so that you don't go through the page. But it's definitely something that you get better at over time because I have had several cases where I've actually cut through the page, um, even just a little bit, but nothing disastrous, but enough that I realized I had to have a lighter touch. So there's not a lot of detail in this particular fence. I think I added an extra layer there to make it a bit darker. And then I used a stamp set of little dogs. And these dog characters are going to appear throughout the pages of this Dutch door collection. Back to my swatch book again. This time to select some gel pens or any greens really because I wanted to add some grass just to make it look a bit more realistic and give it a base. A bit of shadow on the fence. Shadows always help to make things look a bit more realistic so it's definitely worth adding them. And this little fellow is just poking his head through the fence having a look.
Now this is where it starts getting interesting. So I wanted this little doggy's face to be looking through a hole in the fence on my title page. So that, that wasn't actually my title page that we just saw being designed. That was actually the page for my monthly calendar. So now I'm creating my title page and you can see I've used um, a circle template to cut out a circle on the page. And now I'm building the fence for the title page with a few different colors of washi. This was really straightforward. I literally just got, they were all 1.5 centimeter wide tapes and I just stuck them down all next to each other across the page. And then I cut out afterwards. So this is my fence on my title page. As you can see, I've covered over the hole for the moment and I'll do more with that in a minute. Okay, so we we'll put the cutting, well, oh, I'm just cutting off the strips at the bottom. I put the cutting board behind and then cut out the tape that was covering the hole. So now you can see the dog's head looking through the fence. And you can see it kind of blends in a little bit, partly because I've got the pink fence behind it as well. I probably should have used a different color, but I decided that I wanted to make the porthole stand out a little bit more so that it was quite clear that the dog was looking through something. So I used my circle template again and just with some spare paper I cut out a ring that I wanted to stick down to the edge of the hole. I've definitely gotten more comfortable with using my knife. I was not very good at it to start with. Here I'm just cover cutting an angled top to my fence palings. It doesn't matter here how hard I press because I will eventually be cutting, cutting through that anyway. Oh no, I'm not. No, I left this page. <laughs> I take that back. I'm using a very gentle touch here to just remove the layer of washi on top so that I get a nice top to my fence palings and tweezers are pretty handy too. I added a bit of white paint, Posca paint pen to the ring to make it whiter and then decided to add a little bit more detail by putting a plain white tape, washi tape over the top with a little bit of writing on it. Just makes it a bit more interesting. Done. Okay, we're back to the title page and I'm just putting in the February. I chose a font. I choose all my fonts from Pinterest mostly. I look for alphabets of fonts and just choose one for the month. Something you missed in this process because I obviously lost a bit of video. Um, I went through and using my iPad drawing as a guide in Procreate, I was able to draw just a basic line on each page, kind of telling me where to cut it off, where to basically set my drawing so that it would be sitting the right distance above the page before it. Because I wanted a little bit of detail to show from the page before, I want to see the top of the fence and anything that's happening at the top of that fence but I don't want to show what's going on inside the backyard. So in this case, when the page before it goes over it, you won't see the dog looking through the porthole. It was really important too to change the fence colors between each page as well so that they all didn't blend into each other. So I went for a more gray theme on this one. It's quite easy this because it's all just straight strips of washi, nothing fancy. First thing I'm doing is a very light cut to take the washi down to below the lattice section of the fence. And now we're going to clear the washi from around the dog. Just get rid of all of it.
I didn't actually cut out this porthole because I didn't want to give away what was behind the fence. So I just coloured the dog in, in this case, and made a green background. Use my green markers again and some green gel pen. It's a jelly roll. The others are Tombow markers. That was my cleaning tracker. Don't need a very big page for that one. That's the other thing you have to think about. Because you're doing cut down pages, you don't have as much space on each spread. I am in love with these press on graphics. I have been buying lots of them. They're so lovely because they really don't look like they're stickers. Next page, next fence. So the fence before was a greyer colour and the one before that was pink so we're back to the pinky type base although this one's a bit more brown. Very straightforward um, fence palings Again, using the knife with the cutting board behind. I then cut around each top of the, each fence paling. The cutting board is a self-healing mat. It's amazing. You don't see any evidence of the cut marks in it. And then I had to cut fairly close to the binding. Don't cut too close because you may have pages fall out so you do end up with a little bit of paper kind of edging along that binding area. Here again I'm cutting the washi tape from around the dog stamp that I'd put there and there we go. Colour that one in. I went for a dark dog this time because I was worried he wouldn't stand out against that fence. This is the next spread, next fence. This one's only short because I haven't recorded all of this section. Um, and this fence was much more straightforward. So I just had uh, a couple of sheet, wide sheets of washi to stick down. Uh, the dogs have to be stamped before the washi, obviously. It's much easier to put the washi over the top and cut around your drawings rather than trying to cut the shape of your washi and then fit the stamp in, it's pretty obvious. I forgot to stamp these dogs. <laughs> I once again wanted to have dogs looking over the fence so I just rolled down a bit of washi. I love the fact that washi can be stuck and restuck. Um, my stamp didn't quite press down properly. You really do have to kind of put a bit of pressure on it, especially those big stamps. Now this I'm just cutting the washi away to make a wavy, I kind of thought this would be like corrugated iron and then I had to once again cut around the tops of all the dog's ears like I had on an earlier fence. So you didn't get to see the rest of that one but you'll see it in the flip through. So we're getting close to the end now, there's another fence, this time it's a picket fence and this is the last one that's hiding something behind it. I really love how this particular spread turned out because I drew a kennel to go in the backyard that you won't see once the page in front of it's down. You had to, I had to think a little bit about which page I would do each of my spreads on because Obviously there's a lot more space here than there was at the beginning. I wouldn't normally do my cleaning spread so early in the month but because it was a very short page it suited my cleaning spread whereas I used this page for my exercise tracker and I think it was also my mental health spread so it needed a bit more room. Oh no it was my mood tracker. That's right, it was an exercise tracker and a mood tracker and I needed a bit more space for those. So here I'm using washi tape to decorate my kennel roof. Look guys, it's so easy. You just stick down the washi. The trickiest thing is cutting it away. Um, the other way to do it, as I've shown in other videos, is to actually just use some tracing paper and draw yourself a template and then you can put that on your washi tape and cut it out. 
on a cutting board and then you can just stick your perfect shape onto your page that way you don't have to worry about cutting through your page it's super easy the rest of it I decided to just color in so it was a bit quicker now I skipped a bit here because I figured you didn't need to see more fence palings um, now I'm cutting out the washi around my kennel and I've still got to cut around the cat as well I hope this inspires you to give it a try because not all washi tape design is tricky and it just takes a bit of practice and I really like mixing it with colouring and stamping I thought I'd put a couple of dog paws on the kennel to make sure it was clear who owned it now you'll see there's a kitty cat at the dog food bowl the kitty cat's been a bit naughty and has eaten the dog's food and we'll see what turns out with that later my picket fence has a curved top Putting in some cross supports for my fence. Bit of shadow on the on the wood. That's the darker, the really skinny bit of dark tape along the bottom of it. Really makes a difference, these little details. And this one I'm adding a green bush behind because I didn't want to cut through as you'll see the picket fence is see-through so I didn't want to cut through all the way down because obviously I want to hide what's behind it so I decided to add the green bush and here we have the top of the fence so I'm cutting out the top of the pickets didn't even bother trimming off the washi because I was cutting off the whole lot and I haven't shown you these before but I thought I'd show you how I decorated this because I thought it was so cute this is my mood tracker and I've got a little dog that's walking up to his kennel and getting horrified because the kitty cat's eaten his biscuits and the footprints were my mood tracker for each day so I basically colored them in each day according to my mood the Tombow colors so I can find them again and this is my final page which doesn't show very much but basically it's just a, a house that sits behind the final fence it was wind washy as well you can see it in the flip through I think my phone ran out of battery That was a sticker that I cut some out of to fit behind my house, so it looked realistic. And there you have it, that's the final page, and we go back to the page before, and you can see that each fence covers up whatever's hiding behind, but you can see enough that you know that there's an extra layer there. So in this one, for instance, you'll see the doggies sticking over the top, but you won't see the two sitting on their beds in the backyard. And it was really important that it was lined up carefully to make sure that each page covered up the one behind it, or covered up the secret details. And I really love that aspect of this month layout because I loved having something, a surprise to see each time I turned a page. And so seeing it forwards again, that was my month of Dutch door spread. I really enjoyed doing it. It was challenging and it took me a long time to work out, especially the design part of it on Procreate, working out how my layers would all fit together. But I was so happy with how it turned out and I really hope that you've enjoyed looking at it and that you'll try something similar soon. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe and I hope you have a great day. See ya.